talk to you about uh, thinking things. I don't think I have to introduce the concept of Internet of Things because everybody who is here probably knows much more about it than I do. Uh, so we, we started our project with, with a question. So like, how can, how can we make the, the, the Internet of Things more accessible? How can more people, more businesses, or the society at large can benefit, benefit from it? Because in reality, it's, as Yuri said in the beginning, it's, it's a very complex thing. And, um, and not many people are, are up for participating. So, actually, you know, Internet of Things solutions are really complex. So you need a lot of disciplines, a lot of different skill sets to actually make something happen. So if we think about Internet of Things, it's about objects turned into services, or object, services around objects. So if you take a normal object, you know, a cube, you know, or, or a stool, it's just a stool. If you connect it to the internet, if you make it, if you uh, make it intelligent, everything changes. You know, and suddenly you can have services around it. The whole business model uh, around it will change. But again, in actually, in fact, you're you're increasing the complexity, and not many players are really up for for dealing with this. So today, what's happening is pretty much reserved to the really big players. Jiri said, pointed out really nicely, it was, it's the intranet. There's many intranets out there, everybody claiming, oh, but it's our system that actually should, should be used widely, but in the end, it's only very many vertical solutions. And then there's like the Arduino, the, the really tech-savvy maker crowd that is uh, smart enough to tackle all those different elements. Uh, but the areas in between, they're largely left out of, or these are those for who the Internet of Things is still quite invisible. So we, our, our vision is how, how can we democratize the Internet of Things? How can we make it more accessible to those who are in there? How can we actually you know, enable the Internet of Things in the long tail? So, you know, that may be you know, smaller solutions for big players, or how can smaller uh, small and medium companies create new services around connected objects, or how can they then create connected products for, for end users, or there's a lot of people who want to build their own things, but they don't have that expertise, they're, they're, not, they're not as nerdy as it is required right now to build something with Arduino, with Raspberry Pi, with the different sensor kits. Um, so how can we enable them to create something on their own? So this is how we came about with, with thinking things. So we describe it as an like, end solution for building uh, intelligent connected products and services. So it's really an enabling platform. So what does that consist of? On one hand, we have modular hardware. So it's, it's these little little modules that you can click together that uh, recognize each other automatically. So for most of the solutions out there around sensors and actuators, we probably have something that solves um, the, the, the current need. Um, another thing is that we built in a sim that works on a global level. So a sim is actually really useful because you're independent of greater infrastructure. Of course, you need the mobile network, but you don't need you, you can do without a gateway. So for having for for enabling a really quick installation in places where you don't have a gateway, we don't have a router, it's a it's a really convenient op option as well as you should go into rural areas. Um, so it's like it's worry-free connectivity. Um, we also have a front end, like a, like a dashboard, so to say, where you can control uh, the modules, you can uh, read the data, you can remote control them, uh, you can create uh, rules, um, smart behaviors. So all the intelligence is actually in the, back, in the back end. So these modules themselves, they're pretty dumb, uh, but the intelligence sits in the back end. Uh, and for, for people who want to do more advanced stuff, we have an API that they can connect to. So in the end, we want to enable people like like this one, one of our clients. They're like the, the foremost experts in preserving Roman, Romanic uh, architecture. And they're really good at like figuring out, okay, what needs to happen uh, when there's a crack here or there. So with our with, with our modules, we, they can deploy sensors in all those different buildings so that they can provide their service, which is not deploying sensors, but their service is making sure that their church is not falling apart, but they can make that better. So as a first 
step, well, what we are rolling out is, is certain kits. So in this case, it's uh, like, a, like a preset of modules with um, customized presets of behaviors. Uh, in this case, we have one, one kit around tracking. For instance, if you have sensitive uh, shipments that need to be monitored, like in this case, blood samples that should get to the, to the point of destination without turning into morphia, as we say. Um, so we have to, we, we can maintain the temperature there, so we can do the location tracking and, uh, uh, and the condition tracking there as well. We can, we have a, have a presence kit where we can do room monitoring um, very easily, like for smart home or for um, server rooms, for, for fridges that shouldn't be open. Or um, we, can, we can also not only detect things, but we can also remote control things, for example, we can uh, um, sense the conditions in, in agricultural environments and then therefore control uh, you know, the irrigation that is needed there. So these are like first, first starter kits for people to, to get their, their head around and start with the, with the Internet of Things and make it work for them. I think that's pretty much it. Uh, do you have any questions? Are these commercially available? Almost. <laughs> if you want one, we can tell you one. Yeah. Uh, so, so these little white blocks are really like Lego. You can just kind of put them together somehow. Mm -hmm. Is it? Is that the idea? Yeah. So these like things. Yeah. These modules. You can click them together, and they yeah. automatically recognize each other. So they always know what module is connected to the core. Yeah. Um, and. And are the little the little blue dots are those lights or? No, these these little dots they're they're contacts. Uh, okay. so these are the contacts where the information is being passed on. Okay. It's a bus. And each each block is a type of communication. So so we have different types of blocks. It's a. Um, so, so we have like the core thing is a communication module that has the sim inside and that has the, has the modem inside uh, and also the main intelligence. And then we have different types of sensors. All right, make the sensor there. Yeah, the door was closed, but we figured that out. Uh, so there's an ambient sensor. We have we have battery models. We have a, have a smart plug that actually that works like a relay. And then we also have. Um, um, and then that relay also has acts as an actuator, so you can switch things off and off. Another question there, yeah. Yes. <coughs> Just a quick question. It's here. Sure. Uh, um, your intelligence, these kind of rules, uh, are in the back, uh, uh, yes. I, I guess, in the servers, uh, not in, a, in, in the client's computer. Or you're not connecting the client computer to the sensors, but connecting the sensors to some back system that is... Uh, of, right, but now the intelligence sits in the back end. So this, I mean, in the, there's a front end where you can define the rules, where you can, uh, can change them, but the, the, the sensor or the modules themselves, they're pretty dumb. So, so there are certain situations where you want to have uh, activity happening on site locally. So, so we are, we're figuring out what are like the best use cases for making it locally versus sending it to the server and going back, sometimes you want to break a little bit quicker. Uh, so you won't have it on site, but uh, we, we try to keep them, you know, more as flexible as possible. And then the best way to do this is to keep the intelligence in the background. Yeah, but it's just uh, as you were sorry for, for like rural areas where you may have very strange connectivity. Mm -hmm. Maybe at the point that you have to take the uh, the decision, just at that very moment you don't have the the, the connectivity to to go back and forth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think those those kind of things we have to make them on a case by case mm -hmm. basis. Did you know how it's going to be? Did you know how it's going to be? Yeah, but I think that these guys are thinking not only in Spain. Well, sure. <laughs> most countries, I say most Western countries, for 2G is 100% coverage. 2G is the one that doesn't have necessarily 100%. Um, there are some ballets in the inner Galicia that don't, don't, don't have fully uh, coverage. I mean, 97, 98, yes. 100% uh, no. Let, let's face it. I'll try it then. Uh, does your platform work just with your hardware, or I mean, I can connect my Arduino, for example, to, the, to your backend and create an environment with other hardware? At this point, this is what it is. 
Um, we have no. We, we have to figure out, and this is what we actually want to learn and want, want to figure out is like what are people interested in? Do they want to connect their own hardware to it? So um, let's talk. Uh, uh, we have first there. Yeah. Do you have do you have a, a solution for for energy like solar panels or something like that? Do you have think about? You know. We, we have been thinking about it. So at this point, we have these two. Uh, like a so we have batteries. The batteries can actually be stacked. So, so right. It's more really more about like optimizing, you know, the, the battery life uh, for, for certain applications. But you know, we have on our drawing boards many of these. You know, how can we be more independent, even in rural areas? Um, but we're just getting started. Yeah, so it's related to the, the mobile. You're bringing everything back to mobile, uh, mm -hmm. which is the typical mobile telcos, obviously. Um, I have a related question, which is about, you're talking about democratizing um, IoT working on price points that you're looking at, and is it really going to democratize by the time you buy these, and you have to do um, 3G or whatever, is that really going to be democratizing thing? Can I pass the answer on? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> well, if you, if you are asking about what is democratic in using 2G, 3G, well, 2G and 3G networks use a part of the spectrum which have, has been uh, allotted by the countries for the common uh, use of them. Uh, so, and they can be reached everywhere we are permeated by these networks. Uh, I think that, yeah, really, giving these networks to the people so they can use them more freely to give them more uses is a bit more democratic-wise. Um, I mean, the democratization aspect of it has different dimensions. So on one hand, we, uh, the modularity offers you uh, an economy of scale because with you know with, with a few standardized systems, you can almost reach 80-90% uh, of the use cases, and that should definitely bring the price down without being able to tell you now a fixed number. But it will definitely be you know better price than others. But the other aspect is also one around accessibility. Accessibility in the sense of um, people who are not super nerds, who are who are not hackers, who are not big companies, who have the have the, have the ability to create teams or dedicated teams to actually uh, create custom solutions, uh, so that those can actually also create those solutions. So so it's it's about reducing the complexity. So what what Jiri has mentioned before, there's all these different elements in there. Uh, so we're trying to take over a lot of those so that the people can concentrate on what their expertise is. By the way, I love it. <laughs> no, it's I'm just, fine. I'm just asking what the cost, what kind of We need to learn more than to speak. That's so, uh, three questions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, to me, uh, I think the beauty of this is in the, uh, in the modularity because it enables an endless amount of different uh, solutions. So the question is why are you commercializing it in these very specific kits that seem to be very geared towards specific use cases? Um, the, the, let me, let me start. Uh, the one reason is we have to help people imagine what they can do with it. Nobody, nobody is buying platforms. No? Um, pe people want to figure out what it is. It's just, I compare it a little bit with the with the smart with the with the iPhone. So so the iPhone comes with like a first set of um, of applications. So you can match. Oh, okay, I can do email. I can do uh, I can do the browsing. So maybe I can do all these other things. So we have to help people imagine what they can do with it. Because if we want to be an enabling platform, um, the first step is to provide the technology and uh, the system capabilities of it. But then, as I, what I mentioned before, like to make that that mental jump from turning an object to a connected object, it's not really it's not really that easy for for many people. So they have a product that works. Uh, let's say, I don't know, we have a garden irrigation system and you have a timer there. So now going from there to an intelligent irrigation system by con uh, adding intelligence and con connectivity to it, it, it just changes everything. And um, so in order for people to, to understand hey, how, how much can you actually gain from connecting it and, and what solutions could I actually come up with myself, I think we have to help people imagine this. And that's why we're, we're starting with something that is more tangible. Uh, 
Um, that, that, I mean, the, the, the protocol is a very simple one. It's an I2C, but it's, uh, but how, how are we going to do this? Um, I mean, I think it's still, still open to anyone on it. Who is most interested in this type of platform? Um, th th these are all open questions that we try to figure out. And I, I can't give you a definite answer on that one yet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 